Oh, you previously testified that you were the CEO for Art of Elysium. Is that correct? That is correct. And are you still currently in that position? Yes, I am. And how long have you been the CEO for Art of Elysium? I am the founder of the organization. So um, we did our first workshop in August of 1997 filed the legal paperwork in February of 98 to set up a 501c3. So I guess since the beginning of the charity. Ms. Howell, when did you first meet Amber Heard? At the Pineapple Express premiere is where I met she and her sister Whitney. Do you remember approximately what year that was? I believe it was around 2008. I'm sure that could be pulled. It was the LA premiere. I think, I think there was probably multiple premieres, but it was the Los Angeles premiere of Pineapple Express. Was Ms. Heard there with Mr. Depp? No, this was long before. Um, I was a guest of James Franco and Amber was in the movie. And so I met she and her sister at the, I mean, to be specific, at the after party of the premiere. Did Miss Enriquez end up working for Art of Elysium at some point? Yes, she did. What year did Miss Enriquez begin working with Art of Elysium? I believe it was in 2014. I don't have those documents right in front of me. Um, I believe it was leading into the year Amber was receiving the award. And what was Miss Henriquez's position at Art of Elysium? Art Salon Manager, Director. Does Miss Henriquez still work for Art of Elysium? No. When did that end? Oh, 2015, I believe. Each time you saw Mr. Depp, did you ever see him doing any illicit illegal drugs? Never. Did you ever see him consuming excessive amounts of alcohol? Yeah, no. Never. Did you ever see Mr. Depp appear intoxicated? No. Did Ms. Heard ever show you photographs of depicting injuries on her face or body? No. Did Ms. Heard ever tell you that Mr. Depp was abusive towards her? No. Mr. Depp paying your legal fees, Ms. Howell, for this deposition and the testimony you've provided in the UK action? He is not. Who is? Myself. Do you feel any particular sense of loyalty towards Mr. Depp? None at all. Do you feel any sense of loyalty towards Ms. Heard? None at all. Ms. Howell, do you recognize this check as the check that the Art of Elysium received on behalf of Ms. Heard for a donation, an anonymous donation of $250,000? Yes. Yes. I believe you testified previously that you understood that the anonymous donor was Elon Musk. Is that true? Yes. yes. If I could please have Exhibit 4 brought up. And for the record, it's base stamp JH22 through 29. Do you recognize this 
document, Ms. Howell, and if you need to scroll through the eight pages, feel free. Um, I, how, can you scroll down? Yeah, I recognize that. And what is this? That is an email, I believe, I sent to Whitney. Scrolling up to the first page of this attachment, who is Marcel? Pariso? Sure, Pariso. He, he is one of my oldest friends in Los Angeles who has served as a board member of the Art of Elysium and is one of my biggest confidants here in LA, kind of for the course of my career. I'm going down to the third page of this exhibit. Thank you. This is an email, Ms. Howell, that you sent to Whitney Henriquez on or about Tuesday, July 28th, 2020 at 11.20, excuse me, at 11.02 a.m.? It is. This is a true and accurate copy of an email exchange that you sent to Ms. Henriquez? Yes, I believe I'm the one who gave that. Yes, it is. And then did you forward email exchange and the attachments to Marcel Parasau. Yeah, I asked him to keep it for me. This is one of the most important letters that I've ever written in my life. I asked to write a letter to you in my own words after receiving two subpoenas yesterday to give testimony of my knowledge of what happened to lead you to stay with me after leaving the Eastern Columbia building and the penthouses of Amber and Johnny. The reason this letter is so important to me is that you, my chosen sister, are so important to me and I am hoping that the truth will set you free from a lifetime of abuse and being forced to live someone else's life instead of given the freedom to live your own. I feel that I'm writing this on behalf of everyone who loves you and wants to help save you from yet again, fighting a battle that is not yours to fight. Outside of Google Alerts for the charity and what is the media circus going on right now, I've been unaware of the ins and outs of what is happening between Amber and Johnny. It has been brought to my attention that you made reference to Amber kicking you out of the penthouse and went to live on your boss's floor. I don't think it took them long to connect the dots and figure out who your boss was at the time. I have been trying to catch myself up to speed on everything and I'm afraid that there are different storylines between what I shared and what you shared. I spoke with Adam Waldman this morning and was asked some questions and answered honestly on my account of the situations, just so you know. Adam was respectful, kind, and understood my allegiance and all of this to you and you alone. I've never been more upset during any of this drama than I am right now as I thought of Amber asking to leave Gavin. I think Gavin is her significant other at the time. And Hunter, I believe is Whitney's son, to go to London and entangle you in all of this. If you feel that you've been asked or compromised in any way to do anything you might perjure yourself, I beg you to recant and for once in your life, think of yourself first. You have been found an incredible man and have this beautiful and amazing child. And if anyone would ever put you in a position to risk that, they do not love you. I have shared the names of the other staff at the Art of Elysium who were on board while you were there and heard your account of the situations. I am not sure if they will be subpoenaed, but their names have been submitted to the record. I hope you know that the little family created during your time at the Art of Elysium I'll love you very, very, very much. It crushes my soul knowing that you may hate me for the rest of your life and never speak to me again. Losing your friendship is something that I'm willing to risk if it frees you, Hunter, and Gavin from all of this and allow you to testify to both your family and your life to you and you alone. You have been my every prayer, every thought, and every consideration. I stated while questioned that I did not have dates nor timelines because when you showed up to stay with me, I never thought twice about giving you a home and was happy to provide you with my guest room and have informed you that safety in my place. I never wrote down when you moved in nor when you left because my home was and will always be your home. I have entered to record that I'm happy to share any text messages, emails, or anything they need from that time to help appropriately piece together specific dates in an accurate timeline. I have offered anything that I have to help shed light on the absolute truth and put an end to all of this to move on with this next chapter of your life. I promise you that the next chapter will be your very best yet. The things that came up during the deposition with Adam are as follows. The incident on the stairs that 
that was one of the inciting evidence events bleh, ev events that led you to move in with me. You told me and the others on staff that you tried to stop Amber from attacking Johnny and nearly got thrown down the stairs. At no point in time was it ever said to me that Johnny had hit Amber nor abused her in any way. Had you ever expressed concern that Johnny was abusing Amber, I would have gotten a social worker or someone to help you remove your sister from that situation. I would have done anything to help you in any way. My father reminded me this morning that I told him that Whitney had moved in with me because she was terrified of her sister. While you were living with me, you told Johnny kept checking in to see how you were doing and that he called you sis and you called him brother. You said to me on multiple occasions that you did not know why he was staying in it or why he was putting up with Amber's abuse. You shared with me the damage endured by both of you as children and the injury had suffered from Amber both psychologically and physically. You were devastated during this time and my heart broke for you. My heart still breaks for you now. When you came back from New York, I believe this was for the Tribeca Film Festival, Adderall Diaries premiere or both, you shared with me and everyone in the office that Amber freaked out, attacked you and threw a glass of wine, full of red wine at you in the elevator. Again, my dates are uncertain, but I'm 100% certain of what you shared. And I've asked a few others who heard in the office to make sure my facts are accurate. While Amber and Johnny were in Australia, you were in the office sitting in the black and white chairs near the kitchen and loudly proclaimed, Oh my God, she has done it now. She has cut off his fucking finger. I'm not sure if this was before or after Boo and Pistol were back in the US and coming back into the office. Other staff was in the office at the time and might have a better grasp of the date. In regards to the extramarital affairs, I have only information you and others have shared with me. It is my understanding all of this is completely irrelevant other than James giving a sworn testimony to what he did and did not see on Amber's face that day in the elevator. I told Adam that if James were asked anything at all that I know without a shadow of doubt that he would speak to the truth because I know his heart and his conscience and the spiritual journey that he is on to be accountable for anything he's ever done that might have inadvertently hurt anyone and to go to great lengths to make amends and do what is truly right. I encourage him to speak to James directly. When Elon came up in the deposition, I shared only what I know from you and Paige. February 9, 2019, when I came to see you and meet hunters when this conversation with you and your mom took place. I told them I had been told that Elon had gifted Teslas, but Amber found out that they were bugged. I was told that Amber said he was controlling abusive and that she was in a legal battle with him over the rights to the embryo that they had created together. And Amber tried to keep them to have a baby. That is the day that your mother told me that Johnny was either an angel or a saint compared to Elon and that she wished that Amber and Johnny would reconcile. Why would the mom say that if she believed that Amber was being abused? Probably because she didn't believe that. I was indeed taken back because this was after the divorce and when Hunter was under a year old and I was at your house. She told me that Amber and Johnny were still in touch and that they were each other's true loves or something to that exact sentiment. You were still going through all the emotions of having had the baby and all those ups and downs. I cannot believe that Amber and Johnny's relationship had been discussed while you were all the one who needed to be the focal point and needed our support. I think I called Tosh when I left your house but need to look at my phone records to be sure whom I called. It was someone who knew everything from you and I confided in them how concerned I was after visiting you. The other things that were discussed were the character reference letters that I wrote on behalf of Amber for her volunteering with the charity and the $250,000 donation, anonymous donation on behalf of Amber Heard. I shared that I believe that the contribution was from Elon and have absolutely no recollection recollection of you telling me that, but for some reason that was put in my head by something either you or someone else on the staff said. Your thoughts on Rocky freeloading off of Amber and then freeloading off of Johnny and your overall thoughts on Rocky. I let them know that I did not think that there would ever be a world in which you would conspire with Rocky to do a cover for Amber given out your feelings about her. And after the art of Elysium had been used in press during the divorce, and I had been asked on multiple occasions to write letters regarding Amber's volunteering with the charity and no donation came to the art of Elysium, but went to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles and the ACLU that Amber's publicist told me that they were more prominent charities with more significant press reach and got international press. We were aware of all of that already. I just want to share everything that I discussed. I asked if it was okay to write to you in my own words because I know how easily things can get distorted or twisted. You know me and know that if subpoenaed or brought this into anything else that I would always be honest. I love Amber. I have compassion for her because she is your sister. And I know what you guys went through as kids. The two of you have literally been through hell together. And I know you would do anything in the world for her. She is your older sister. You just lost your mother and you are a mom for the first time. It is time she thought of you and your needs and put them above her own needs. Asking you or even agreeing to have you leave your husband and child and involve you in all of this is selfish beyond comprehension. You, Whitney, are worthy of love, worthy of being seen for all of your light and beauty, and worthy of not having to clean up another mess that is not yours. During this time of social change movements, hashtag me too, time's up, Black Lives Matter, and all of our actions working to set the scales of justice back to being well, just people having to willing to come forward the truth. It took two subpoenas to get me to be forthcoming with what I've been told, but I do believe in people and feel others who have bear witness to all of it. Why did you send this email and letter to Ms. Enriquez? 
because I've struggled very much with what to do in a situation that I love someone who I know is doing something very wrong and I know that they're doing it because they're trying to protect their sister and I'm trying to protect her and I'm just trying to get her to wake up and do the right thing, which is tell the truth. That's the only thing that can help everybody involved in this case. Ms. Howell, do you recall submitting a witness statement in the United Kingdom? Yeah, they basically just called to verify the witness statement that was submitted previously. And do you recognize this document to be the witness statement and the declaration that you submitted in the UK? And if you want to scroll down to look at it. Yes, I recognize it. And at the first page, do you see a date on this document? January 13th, 2021. And is this document a true and accurate copy of the declaration that you submitted in the UK proceeding on or about January 13th, 2021? Yes. And are all the statements in your UK declaration accurate and true? I mean, yes, I signed it. Yes. All right, let's pull up what I believe was DEP Exhibit 9. It's been marked as DEP Exhibit 9. So, Ms. Howell, earlier you were shown this document. Um, scrolling to the end of it. Can you go? I don't, okay. There. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Waldman assist you in drafting this email? Absolutely not. Did you speak with Mr. Waldman at all about drafting this email? About writing an email? No, I did that on my own accord. Did you speak with Mr. Waldman at all about contacting the ACLU? I do not recall having a conversation with him about that. And Ms. Howell, you testified earlier that you received a check from Fidelity Charitable in January of 2018, is that correct? Um, I don't know if I said the date, but yes, I received an anonymous donation from that check that was submitted, whatever it's on there. I just don't know the date off the top of my head. And you testified that there was a letter sent along with that, um, that said that, uh, it was on in honor of Amber Heard. Yes. Richard, I was guaranteed 20 minutes with them after being attacked for three and a half hours by your side the last time. So I am going to stick by what I was told before entering this.